So the more processes we have, the more web sockets you will open. And it's technically not a problem that much for the server, but for you, for your computer, a web socket is a is a full blown TCP connection, right? So it's it's a little heavy in terms of establishing and tearing down. So a full blown TCP connection is something which is not what you need. You can multiplex these things. Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just understand a little bit about multiplexing and WebSockets and what does that mean? Because we did a little bit of architectural change which would have made your playgrounds a little bit more faster, a little bit more efficient and easy to use. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start by opening my dev tools and you know that this is a serious video if we start with dev tools first i'm gonna go ahead and start with a basic solidity playground let's say web sockets simple as that so now this obviously is not a web3 video or anything but now once this playground boots you're gonna see that we open this transfer web socket which gets connected to this container which we are running this computer over here because you can see all these messages coming in these are messages from this npm package update right which is the installation which is happening so at least we know by the looks of the messaging that this over here is because of the things happening in the container itself but you see when you connect to a container like this there is a lot of things happening right the terminal is one part where you get the visibility into the CLI. The second part is when you update these files. For example, if I change this simple storage to simple storage contract, for example, then I also need to send a message to update this file. Then maybe if I open, let's say .cdmrc, I need to send this file to request this message and so on. So how do you do all of these different processes, all of these different things over the same WebSocket? Because if you very simply imagine, and that, that is what we actually used as well earlier, if you imagine about a WebSocket connection over here, it could very well be thought of something like a pipe with your client and the server process itself, right? So if this is a bash terminal, if this is a bash terminal over here, let's say if I launch another terminal over here, you see that this these two terminals are two processes running on the server. Similarly, this area over here might be a process which watches the directory. So the simplest way to implement this is that you open different different pipes on the client side on the front end where all the communication, for example, this terminal has its own WebSocket terminal one. This terminal might have its own WebSocket terminal too. This changes happening over here might have their own WebSocket where all the changes get synchronized. This makes it easy because now WebSockets have an analogy of a single pipe linked with a single process. But you see that this would actually get cumbersome really quick because as we grow the product, as we grow this playground area over here as well, we will add more and more processes in the background for the front end to interact. That might be something related to, let's say, some last save time of your playground, some CPU usage, something around, I don't know, like it could be anything, right? So the more processes we have, the more WebSockets you will open. And it's technically not a problem that much for the server, but for you, for your computer, a WebSocket is a, is a full blown TCP connection, right? So it's, it's a little heavy in terms of establishing and tearing down. So a full blown TCP connection is something which is not what you need. You can multiplex these things. And of course, WebSockets don't support multiplexing or anything like that out of the box. So what we had to do is we had to implement a little bit of multiplexing within this single WebSocket. So what multiplexing actually means is that instead of opening all these sockets all at once, we picked up a single socket and we transfer all the traffic through that single socket and we demultiplex it on the back end. So I'm gonna show you an example of how this multiplexing works. Let's say I write a letter one over here. So this binary message which you see is basically sending a one to the server, to the container. But you also see that we are sending this 05, which is number five. So the first byte in our message over here it's kind of a channel. So what we have done over here is that we have assigned a different channel to every process on the back end. So instead of opening a stream or opening a web socket over here for every single other process, we have a single channel listening for that on the back end. So if I write two in this terminal, you can see that I gave this message two on the fifth channel over here. You know, this is 32 is the ASCII code of number two, but you get the idea. Now if I press control C, for example, you see that I sent this on third channel, right? So you see that we are able to communicate and differentiate between different channels and so on with the channel 
ID as the first byte in the WebSocket message. Similarly, you can see the message which arrived was for channel 3. So this terminal 1 is actually running on channel 3. This terminal 2, whatever I write over here, let's say if I write something like, you know, clear. And when I hit enter, you're going to see I send this enter message. But what arrived was for channel 5. So you see that this is channel 5, this is channel 3. If I go ahead and open a new file, let's say hardhat.config, this is operating on channel 1 over here, which you see as the first byte. Now I know this because, well, we literally programmed the system, but that's how it works in our case. Now what's the advantage of doing something like this? Well, you see that now what the individual WebSockets were doing over here, that was separating and segregating the access of different processes we are doing the same thing but we are just using a simple simple first byte of the message itself to differentiate between where the message should be directed because on the back end obviously still these processes are different processes in themselves so you cannot just go ahead and you know blast off every single input to every single process you still have to you know just maintain that segregation but because websockets are built on top of tcp we have a few reliabilities baked in that is all of these message would are guaranteed to arrive in order these messages hopefully should not be corrupted and so on so yeah i mean that's that's great and for real-time communication for things where you know you're working with terminals and you want speed and actual access these things work really nicely because you know this is this is all happening almost instantaneously right because the latency is very low once you have connected to a tcp socket so yep that's how we are multiplexing our web sockets in codedam playground at the moment feel free to try it out on any playground on codedam it's basically free it's fun to use and you can just launch anything and share the codedam playground link with other people as well that is all for this video hopefully you learn something new and hopefully you will be able to do multiplexing a little bit on your own apps as well if you use a lot of web sockets because it saves a lot of resources on the front end that's all for this video i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamp's discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching